The Starship is finally ready for its second test flight. But what has changed in the last few months? The craft's first test flight didn't live up to expectations and has caused a regulatory headache for SpaceX. The company has learned from its mistakes and made significant changes to Starship, but what exactly did it improve? Let's talk about the major differences between Ship 24 and Ship 25, and if they are enough to ensure success this time. Starship's second launch is approaching and there is some skepticism in the air. Can the craft succeed this time, or are we in for another explosion? Have any significant changes been made between the flights? Although Elon Musk claims there are over a thousand new modifications, initially, it appears quite similar to its predecessor. Nevertheless, upon closer examination, noteworthy distinctions emerge between Ship 24 and Ship 25. To begin, we can observe that Ship 25 lacks the black paint on its nose. What's the reasoning behind this change? Some speculate that it's purely cosmetic, especially considering that the paint on Ship 24 had become quite scuffed. Others suggest it might have served as a special protective layer against plasma during re-entry, but SpaceX may believe that Ship 25 won't reach that stage. Moving slightly lower on the Starship, one can observe the locations that previously accommodated hooks used for lifting the prototypes. The intriguingly named Squid Tool was utilized to position these substantial components onto their designated pads. It's worth noting that these attachment points are consistently removed and sealed before the flight. Furthermore, we encounter two pressure valves, one dedicated to oxygen and the other to methane. Directly below these valves, we find two pressure relief vents, which can be likened to the nozzle on a balloon. They serve the purpose of enabling SpaceX to release gas from the tanks, similar to deflating a balloon. The control over this process can be executed either manually or delegated to the Starship's computer. In contrast, the pressure relief vent plays a crucial safety role. When the cryogenic propellant undergoes heating, transforming into gas and causing pressure to surge, the pressure relief vent serves a crucial role in averting a potential catastrophe. Its purpose is to prevent an explosion in the event the pressure escalates uncontrollably. Descending further on the Starship, the forward flaps are self-explanatory components. Just a bit lower, one encounters the SpaceX logo, adjacent to which there are two metal pieces that hold functional significance. They serve as anchor points for the flap chains, securing them in place, particularly during moments of intense wind forces. Additionally, there are six hexagon-shaped tiles positioned beneath the logo. They aren't mere decorative elements. These tiles function as the ship's communication antennas, responsible for transmitting telemetry data back to ground control. Continuing downward, the attention is drawn to the payload bay door. Here lies a distinction between Ship 24 and Ship 25. Ship 25's door features additional reinforcements However, it's noteworthy that both doors remain sealed shut, likely a precautionary measure taken due to stability concerns. Moving ahead, a noteworthy feature emerges, the payload bay access hatch. This hatch serves as the entry point for the crew to access and work on the prototype. In Ship 25, a strategic adjustment has been made, relocating this hatch closer to the rocket's leeward side. Adjacent to this feature, there is another safety component, a pressure relief vent, specifically designed for the large methane tank. Progressing towards the middle of the ship, at the forward dome, we can observe variances between the two prototypes. Ship 25 boasts a distinct stinger pattern, discernible through the welding marks. In this region, two raceways come into view. One functions as the ship's electrical backbone, managing power and data, while the other handles technical aspects such as autogenous tank pressurization. Slightly below, two methane pressure valves are situated. Intriguingly, they are now positioned closer to the ship's heat shield, although the reasoning behind this alteration remains unclear. Directly below these valves, there is a hatch providing access to the methane tank and a specialized unit, the flight termination system. This system is equipped to deploy explosive charges, ensuring the safe termination of the flight in case of unforeseen complications. Past launches have demonstrated occasional issues with this system, but it is hoped that such concerns have been resolved. On the sides of the ship, two cold gas thrusters are installed to facilitate its maneuverability in space, adding to the spacecraft's overall functionality and control. In their quest for innovation, SpaceX has ambitious plans for the future. They are contemplating a significant change, replacing the existing thrusters with a technology known as Ullage thrusters. These new thrusters are distinct in design, featuring bell-like covers and are positioned just below the cold gas thrusters. What sets them apart is their operational principle. Instead of relying on additional gas tanks solely for thruster use, SpaceX aims to utilize the gas that must be released anyway due to the propellant boil-off. This ingenious approach not only demonstrates resourcefulness, but also conserves vital mass and space. Consequently, this innovation enables the possibility of transporting more substantial payloads into orbit. Near the heat tiles, another pair of pressure valves is situated, this time serving the oxygen tank. Continuing downward, we reach the aft flaps, which bear a striking resemblance on both ships. 
However, an intriguing difference emerges. Ship 24's flaps were painted on the inside, whereas Ship 25's were not. This distinction might parallel the case of the nose cone paint. Additionally, both ships share a common feature in the form of their oxygen tank access, situated at the same location. In the aft section, attention is drawn to a specialized plate equipped with connectors, referred to as the quick disconnect panel. This panel plays a pivotal role in linking the prototype to the orbital tank farm. Through a specially designed arm on the orbital launch integration tower, it facilitates the transfer of fuel and power to the prototype, ensuring its operational readiness. Moving on, we encounter what are known as engine chill vents. Engine chill is a crucial procedure implemented to ensure the engine operates at an optimal temperature before ignition. Without this process, the intense heat generated by the cryogenic propellant could potentially damage the engine. Observing venting from these ports serves as a telltale sign that the engines are primed for ignition. The most noteworthy alteration between Ship 24 and Ship 25 lies in the new openings at the bottom of Ship 25. These openings are integral components of the upgraded engine section purge system, utilizing CO2 to displace any oxygen or methane. This meticulous process is designed to prevent the engines from catching fire during the flight. In addition to the advancements in Ship 24 and Ship 25, SpaceX has introduced significant changes to the boosters 7 and 9. While these boosters may boast entirely new internal designs, their external appearances remain surprisingly similar. One of the most conspicuous features is the hot staging ring, a prominent element that was absent on Booster 7, used in the previous test, making direct comparisons challenging. Below the hot staging ring, there are four black fins and a pair of load points crucial for lifting. These load points play a pivotal role as they serve as attachment points for Mechazilla, the apparatus responsible for hoisting the super heavy booster. Additionally, these points are integral to the return plan as Mechazilla will attempt to catch and secure them. Notably, grid fins, although widely recognized, are not robust enough to fulfill this crucial task. Descending further, beneath the heavily reinforced forward dome, two methane ullage thrusters are strategically positioned. These thrusters prove invaluable in the thinner regions of the atmosphere where traditional fins are less effective. Both super heavy boosters feature pipes for autogenous pressurization, which rely on Raptor engine gases to maintain the tank's pressure. These pipes extend all the way down to the engine section. Moving further down the booster, an intriguing area beneath the load points catches the eye. This spot serves as a stabilization point where Mechazilla's arms plug in to provide stability during the lifting process. Curiously, this region is covered with a putty-like substance, the purpose of which remains a mystery. Continuing our exploration, we reach the level of the common dome, the segment that separates the oxygen and methane tanks. Here, the methane access hatch is situated its placement differing between the two boosters. On booster 9, it's positioned to the right of the quick disconnect plate. Nearby, there's the flight termination box, FTS, that played a big role in Starship's first test flight. Slightly below, the ullage thrusters for the liquid oxygen come into view, with a corresponding set on the opposite side. Between the two prototypes, the thrusters appear to differ mainly in the length and tilt of their bell-shaped covers. Moving along, the booster chines become noticeable serving purposes related to airflow and component protection. Within these chines, tanks are housed, storing gas required for spinning up the inner ring of the 13 engines. Notably on Booster 9, these chines are slightly elongated compared to those on Booster 7. This modification is due to Booster 9 featuring an additional CO2 tank for the purging system. At the base, beside the oxygen access hatch, two major modifications stand out. Particularly noticeable on Booster 9 is the absence of the two large units present on Booster 7. These units previously housed the hydraulic power system, responsible for gimballing the Raptors. However, due to its unreliability, SpaceX transitioned to a more efficient electronic system. Additionally, Booster 9 features additional vents in its lower section akin to those seen on Ship 25, contributing to an enhanced engine purging system. While Booster 7 did have a system in place for the same purpose, it lacked the power and these specific vents. It's clear that SpaceX has been busy making significant upgrades to Starship and its boosters in the past few months. As we now wait for the craft to take to the skies once more, a question arises. Has SpaceX done enough to ensure the success of the second test? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.